In this video clip, Noam Chomsky speaks on defunding the police. In general, Chomsky criticizes the slogan, defund the police, for being misleading and counterproductive. He argues that the slogan is easily misinterpreted as advocating for abolishing the police altogether which he doesn't support. Now off to this wonderful clip of Noam, and following his views on redefining police responsibilities and focusing on class struggle. Thank you, Professor. At the core of what you just said um, was the imbalance of power between the civilian population and the state. And we've seen some of the most uh, disgusting and brutal uses of state violence against minority populations, specifically here in the United States. Um, after the uh, murder of Tyree Nichols in January, there were many protests in the United States demanding justice related to police brutality, as well as accountability for those responsible for those crimes. Um, you've written before about your libertarian socialist leanings, but how exactly does that relate um, to your perspective on this new abolition movement, the defunding of the police, the potential abolition of the police, and things within that sphere? Well, let's take the idea of defunding the police. That meant different things to different left activist groups. So you listen to say, Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, many of the leaders of Black Lives Matter, what they meant by defending the police was re removing the police from activities which are none of their business, leaving them to police activities. Uh, that means if you look at what police actually do, overwhelming majority of it is things that aren't police activities, uh, domestic problems, uh, overdoses, uh, uh, all sorts of uh, things where you, the community, community activism and involvement should be directly responsible. Police have no business there. So that's defunding the police. At the same time, improving police salaries, police training, bring them in along, make them part of the movement towards greater social justice. That's one interpretation of defund the police, and I think the right one. And if that can be, of course, the, uh, the idea that you just eliminate the police is strongly opposed, particularly in minority communities, black communities that crime where, where communities that are what are called crimogenic uh, designed uh, socially and uh, economically so that crime is one of the only ways to survive. In those communities, in the short term, they want police. Better than that, they want to eliminate the crimogenic aspects of the communities. Well, all of these things uh, can should fall together in a, I think, constructive, progressive form of revising, reshaping uh, security systems so that they're more they're popularly controlled and direct to the kind of things that are of concern to people in the communities, not involved in things which involve, which require uh, different kinds of uh, engagement and involvement, things ranging from mental health to domestic problems to uh, uh, alcoholism, other things. That's not, none of that has to do with the police. Well, that requires major social changes. The United States, we have an enormous problem, enormous problem of lack of care for uh, people with one or another form of problem in their lives could be uh, uh, enormous poverty. It shouldn't exist in the richest country in the world. Uh, problems of uh, depression. Uh, we have a country which is under such extreme uh, social collapse that it's even, as you know, has an increase in mortality that just doesn't happen among uh, 
societies, except in times of uh, war or pestilence. In the United States, it happens in peacetime and great prosperity, actual decline in, mor in, in mortality, mostly among white working class, um, age, 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 working class ages of mostly white males, not all males. That's a indication of social decay of extreme, of extreme nature. It's only one aspect. There's no resources for mental health problems. They've almost disappeared. They never were very much. Uh, the uh, punitive rather than preventive action uh, policies towards drug use or another aspect. All of these things are illustrations of a dysfunctional social order. And the problem of police is embedded within it, the whole, uh, the roots of the whole social disorder have to be dealt with before you can have a constructive, sensible discussion about the nature of whatever security is needed for the benefit of the community. Thank you. Chomsky advocates for redefining what it means to defund the police. He suggests reallocating resources away from tasks police shouldn't handle, like mental health issues or domestic disputes, and towards community services better equipped to address these issues. This, he argues, would free up police resources for actual crime prevention and investigation. Ultimately, Chomsky argues that focusing solely on police reform is insufficient. He sees the issue of police brutality as deeply rooted in systemic problems like inequality and class struggle. He believes addressing these underlying issues is crucial for achieving lasting change. Therefore, while Chomsky doesn't endorse the literal meaning of defunding the police, he supports the underlying goals of reforming police practices and reallocating resources towards community-based solutions. He emphasizes the importance of clear messaging and addressing the root causes of police violence through broader societal changes. Well, I hope you like the video and give the channel a subscribe. If you wish to join the channel, it's 99 cents a month, the donation would be appreciated and help out the content. Thank you, now take care and bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.